That's Why, true, actually. I but you had all the people who were in the sort of draped clothes yeah, looking over yeah. and screaming. That's I'd forgotten mean. about that, and I, I wasn't referring to that, but that's a good point. The first sort of mise-en-scene that we get when he appears is the, the awful spiral staircase with the black people, as they were called then, looking down at him. So we've got a little bit of a gothic start here. Make, let's make a note of that. There's sort of a, 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 a gothic... Hello, my name is Marek Mishkin. I'm here to introduce A-Level Film Studies at Chosen Hill. So, what is A-Level Film Studies? It is the study of film from 1930s all the way through to the present time. That means that you'll be studying also a range of different genres, from uh, documentaries, silent film, through to uh, modern day classics and action and adventure, as well as perhaps rom-coms. You don't know actually what will be there until you actually turn up. We will obviously let you know, but um, there is a whole range of films there that you'll be looking at. What you'll be doing with that, those films is analysing them. You'll be looking at different theories, and you'll be then uh, asked to write about them in some detail. Um, that means this is quite an essay-focused um, course, which will require those particular skills that you learn in English and history and be able to apply in this course. Um, on top of that, uh, you'll also be producing a, a film of your own, uh, which will last three to four minutes, and also editing that. Uh, that last, that is uh, the equivalent of 35% of the course. The other remaining is exam-based. There are two papers there um, of four hours um, total. Um, lastly, you might be wondering where this is going to lead me. Well, if I say to you that the film industry is one of the biggest industries in the UK and it has an income, generates an income of 2.6 billion and employs 250,000 people, that might give you some idea about how big this is. And that means you can go into all sorts of organisations like Channel 4, BBC, through to radio and TV. Um, students, last of all, and most importantly, will say to you that although this is a new course, they're incredibly enthused by it and they are enjoying it from beginning to end. Thank you. The purpose to every decision the director makes. We're talking today about the micro elements of film. Can anybody tell me what any of those micro elements are? Uh, mise en scène. Mise en scène, good. What is mise en scène? Um, mise en scène is all of the things that you can see in, in the scene. Okay, all of the scenes and the objects. Any examples you can give me? Uh, the crow. Oh, the crow, yeah. good. What might the crow symbolise? Uh, it could symbolise death or bad luck or a bad omen or something. Okay, so certain things have resonance, yeah. don't they? What else might be the mise en scene? Uh, this cat, for oh, instance. Oh, a hat, okay. Yeah. So what might a hat symbolise? Uh, a hat could symbolise maybe that I'm stylish or I'm from the future. Maybe one of those two things, I'm not sure which one. Okay, what else finally might mise en scene be? Well, we are mise en scene. Well, all of us? Yes, we are mise en scène. We are mise en scène, indeed, thank you. Um, what might be another micro element of film? Camera angles. Camera angles. What sort of examples can you give me here, please? A close up. Oh, a close up. What might a close up on a student's face indicate? Uh, emotion. What sort of emotion? Fear, happiness. Happiness in your case, but not. Intimidation, yeah? Leave me alone, okay. What other shots might you have? Um, a scanning shot, a panning shot. A panning shot, a panning shot that goes right across the room from left to right or right to left. What might that do? Might establish a place or characters. A place or character, good. Can, can we have a third example of a camera shot? A low angle shot. Oh, a low angle shot, okay. What might a low angle shot do? This angle shot could suggest power and intimidation. Power and intimidation, maybe make the, the viewer feel a bit threatened. Good. Okay. What other types of micro elements of film might we have? Lighting. Lighting. Good. Uh, what sort of example have we got now with this lighting? High key lighting. Meaning what? Uh, positive, happy lighting. Positive, happy lighting. No shadows, no hiding places. Okay. What else might we have? Uh, low key lighting. Low key lighting, such as? Here we are. Yes. To indicate what? A sense of brooding, fear. Sense Brooding fear, maybe something being hidden again. Finally, is there any sort of specialist lighting that you might indicate? Uplighting. Uplighting. 
yes, we've got up lighting. What might up lighting do? Uh, like a horror movie. Like a horror movie, okay. It might bring out the worst in a character. It might that, that make that character seem threatening to the audience as well. Thank you for the wonderful examples of up lighting. Finally, what other sorts of elements of film might we have? Sound. Sound, okay. What's included in sound? Uh, dialogue. Oh, what is dialogue? It's what we're having right now, sir. It is, isn't it, actually? So it tells us something about the character and the situation. What other type of sound might we have? Parallel sound. Parallel sound. And what does parallel sound do, Nisha? Complements the scene. Complements the scene. If it's a happy classroom environment, then we might hear this. But if it's not, what's the opposite of that? Contrapuntual sound. Contrapuntual sound. Okay, what might that do? Be a juxtaposition to the scene. Juxtaposition to the scene goes against the mood of the scene. Okay, brilliant. Like this, where we look a bit worried, don't we? What's that going on? What's in here? Why is it in here, in the classroom? Okay, good, thank you very much. We will have a round of applause briefly for the elements of film. Thank you. <laughs>